Once upon a time, there was a Swedish software developer that went by the handle Notch. And he created a little game called Minecraft, and it eventually became a viral sensation. Now that is probably information you already know. However, what you probably don't know about, and to be honest, probably didn't care about up to this point, is that I pretty much missed out on the initial hoopla, as my wife was heavily pregnant with our twin daughters, who, in their impatience, decided to be born two months premature. And after that, I was pretty much swamped with constant diaper changing, baby feeding, and just generally being sleepless in Seattle. So fast forward a few years, and things eventually calmed down a bit for me, and uh, after getting our daughter's iPads, I decided to investigate this whole Minecraft phenomenon. Now at the time, my wife was rather disapproving of a grown man playing video games, and to avoid her disapproving stares and nods, uh, I played Minecraft under the guise of determining whether the game was suitable for our daughters and whether it would help them with some important skill development. And of course the game was suitable for my twins, and it did help them with some aspects of their development, but uh, I also found that I was hooked myself. And after all these years, with literally thousands of hours in Bedrock Edition and the Java Edition, I'm still playing and having a blast. Over the course of the 2022 holiday season, some of my friends got me to try modded Minecraft all over again. Now, I had flirted with it way back in the day, but at that time, modded Minecraft was an absolute pain in the butt. And it seemed to require an advanced engineering degree and an incredible amount of time and patience. Unfortunately, at the time, I only had a basic engineering degree and little time or patience. However, the state of modern Minecraft uh, has truly evolved and it's truly amazing and I got hooked on Minecraft all over again. And that brings us to the point of this video. Using mods, I'm able to reshape the game to best fit what I enjoy and how I like to play the game. And this is especially true regarding the Create mod, and particularly the addition of Honest to Goodness Do-It-Yourself Trains in the 0.5 release. Now I have all the pieces I need for a so-called Forever World. And so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm starting an ongoing and massive project of world building. And to understand exactly what that means, you have to understand that my personality is such that if uh, I had been born a few decades earlier, I probably would have been one of those guys who would fill a complete room or two of my house uh, with one of those massive railroading rigs and killing both my bank account and my marriage. Luckily for my wife and me, uh, I grew up at the dawn of the digital age, so I can do my world building virtually, which saves me a lot of space, saves me a lot of dollars, and ultimately saves my marriage. Uh, it also has the added health benefit that I'm not constantly breathing the fumes from modeling glue and paint. So what does all that really mean? Uh, what it means is that I'm going to start with a modded Minecraft world as my canvas, and uh, from there, I'll build a large base or center of operations and expand outward to create or modify villages, transportation systems, and other points of interest. Now, I hope it'll be expansive enough and detailed enough that it'll be interesting in its own right. However, I'll also be going through and sharing my usual planning and thought processes. And so there may be something along the way that's worth stealing for your own use. So in this first episode, I'll go over the plan. Uh, sometimes I like to just jump in and start playing, but I generally prefer to step into the game with, uh, with a detailed plan. Now, it sounds incredibly nerdy and pointy-headed, and let's be honest, it is. But for some reason, I've been cursed with more than my fair share of compulsiveness, and so I just gotta do what I gotta do. And to do otherwise may endanger uh, my sanity and my general well-being, as well as probably drive my family nuts. So this touches upon my playing style and general philosophy. Uh, I'm not the type of guy to play on creative mode, and though I can certainly appreciate the ease and convenience of having an infinite supply of everything at my fingertips, um, I can also appreciate the value of not having to worry about the environment, including eating and sleeping, taking damage, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I totally understand and get the appeal to all of that, but it's just not my style, right? I want to go and find and gather and mine and farm the resources. I don't want to just build something, but I want to build a functioning economy and infrastructure that in turn supports my ability to build something functional. So give me a hatchet and a compass and I'll build an empire from there. Though of course that's just in the game world because in real life I'll probably melt after three days without a shower. So back in the day I was pretty hardcore about working hard for every little bit. Uh, however, I've played literally thousands of hours of Minecraft, both Bedrock and Java, and I've spent years doing it the absolute hard way. 
And after all of that, I feel I've already proven myself to myself dozens of times over. So I don't feel guilty about using a mod or two that makes finding goodies a little easier. While at the same time, I do avoid mods that jump stacks upon stacks of freebies in my lap. The mod pack I'm using does employ some technology mods, but they're what I would call low tech. They're very physical with conveyor belts, water wheels, and steam engines, and it definitely has kind of a, a 19th century feel to it. So I suppose this is about as close to a steampunk mix as one is likely to find out there. Uh, and with that kind of physicality, I'm going to need a bit of real estate. And since up to this point I was playing vanilla Minecraft and doing everything manually, uh, I won't need as much space as what I'm already used to. As for the base design, uh, it'll be the latest iteration on a long line of base designs that have been heavily influenced by my experience in uh, the changing nature of Minecraft over the years. Before I jump into the design though, I want to point out that I use Excel to plot out and plan my base designs. Uh, I set the column and the rows to be roughly the same size, and then use the spreadsheets a lot like digital graph paper. Uh, the diagrams I'm showing you here are from my planning workbook. A fundamental aspect of my base and village templates is that I try to employ modular design. Unless otherwise noted, I tend to build in two different scales. For the, the larger base building and, and other large points of interest, uh, modules are 11 by 11 by 9 blocks in size. And for villages in similar contexts, I use a smaller module size of 5 by 5 by 5. Now for the larger scale, there's a layer of blocks between the floor of one level and the ceiling of the level beneath it. And for these larger builds, I typically use recessed lighting and sometimes redstone circuits or uh, flowing lava, flowing water. Um, and that middle layer of blocks gives me a place where I can set all of that up easily and cleanly. However, I don't have anything like that in the smaller scale as the extra space required will throw off proportions. Uh, besides, lighting in those settings is more through the use of uh, lanterns, torches, that kind of thing. Um, I typically don't design down to the individual block, but uh, sometimes I do when I need things line up by, uh, block by block. And that's kind of rare, except for when I'm trying to install or plan around uh, fireplaces and chimneys. One of the first considerations in my base designs is that they're uh, almost, but not quite completely underground. Um, this is true regardless of the type of look or vibe I want uh, and the simple truth is that despite the bees, the flowers, the happy livestock frolicking through the fields, uh, Minecraft worlds can be pretty dangerous places, even the overworld. I mean, how many times can you wake up in the morning, go out to milk the cows, and find a creeper in the barn? And technically, the creeper found you, and you only found out about it when you hear that telltale ignited fuse sound as he was charging up to explode only a split second before you, your cows, and various bits of your barn are flying through the air on the periphery of a sizable new crater that your uninvited guests left. Most reasonable people only go through that a few times before they start to work on prevention. And one of the simplest and most effective ways to do that is through limited access and lots of lighting. And one of the easiest ways to achieve both is by moving things underground. Now with changes in recent years, mobs won't spawn in the overworld except whenever and wherever the light level drops below level 1. And I truly appreciate that change because it's nice to have the flexibility of mood lighting instead of trying to light everything up like the Super Bowl halftime extravaganza. Uh, once I had decided that I was going to move everything underground for the protection of myself and my resources, uh, the natural design tendency was to continue building down and to move as much as I could down there with me. In the current state of the game, you can pretty much set yourself up to live completely underground if you really want to, and yet still have access to anything and everything you could ever need. So keeping that in mind, uh, my base is best visualized as a large column that stretches from a house, mansion, or castle at the surface, uh, all the way down to the bedrock layer at the bottom of the world. Generally, livestock are kept closer to the surface, while the very bottom is reserved for a metro system, and just above that is the workshop and storage area. The levels in between those extremes are for farming crops, trees, and other useful bits. Uh, of course, that's but a brief summary. Um, each of the things I listed begs a great deal more explanation, and we'll get into greater detail for each of them in turn as we get around to building those components of the base. Uh, aside from the base itself, there is the outside world, right? 
And up to this point, I've been playing vanilla Minecraft, and that means I would encounter vanilla villages and dungeons, uh, vanilla mine shafts, vanilla strongholds. Um, they're okay, but after 10 years, they've kind of grown stale to me. And uh, now that I'm playing in modded worlds, it's literally a different game altogether. And I've tried to find some really great mods to add some interesting stuff to the world. Historically, I would come into a vanilla village and end up replacing and or expanding everything in it. Uh, I fully expect that to continue, but some of these modded villages are so dynamic and interesting that in some cases, uh, I think I'll only need to make adjustments or maybe some expansions. Uh, the need to start over from scratch will be less frequent. Uh, finally, I want to say uh, that I'm going to try something different with this world. Um, well, at least it would be different for me. Um, normally, I just use the usual or default world creation settings, and that usually results in a wide variety of biomes being generally available within easy reach. Uh, this time, I want to try to go with the large biome settings. Uh, it's a little more realistic and a tad more interesting and challenging, uh, though realism has never been a big selling point uh, in Minecraft. The next step for me is to find a seed that I'll be happy with, and then we can begin the series proper. Uh, I'm always happy to hear about what you think of all this, and I'm especially happy to hear when something I've presented here is uh, useful or motivational for your own efforts. And uh, with that, cheers!